Yeah. Jack of All Spades Podcast here. I'm here with my man, Ken YBB. Yep. <laughs> DJ Spellman. AKA the beloved one. <laughs> and our special guest we have, like I said, I've known her all my life. You just now meeting her. It is my sister, LaCole. Hey, happy to be here. What's up? How you doing today? I'm great. Great. Ready to get into this conversation. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. We're going to dive right in. Uh, hmm. But I don't have that note right in front of me. So, uh, <laughs> hey, DJ, I'll take over from here. Then, my brother, heart, uh, uh, let's not forget that we have Banks on the beat. Oh, yeah, I am here, you know, <laughs> as usual. All right, so we, once again, this is the Jack of All Spades podcast. Yep. And the first question on the docket is we're going to talk about the state of dating in 2019. Mm. So people been talking. I mean, it's, it's a topic of discussion. Yep. Everybody's looking for love. <laughs> Everybody can't find it for some reason. So we just want to touch on that. It might be hot. It might look be. Cool. So from each of our perspectives, how do we feel about the state of dating in the year of our Lord? In <laughs> <laughs> the year of our Lord. Oh, man. So, I mean, we all gentlemen right here. So we're going to let LaCole go first. Ladies first. Oh, the state of dating in 2019 is really interesting. Um... First of all, let's talk about online dating. I know that, you know, didn't really talk about this too much beforehand, but um, it seems as though it's all about the online dating. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Do you, do you, uh, are you drawn more to online dating or do you like the old fashioned way of just meeting people organically and going from there? I feel the old fashioned, but I feel like now at the same time, social media plays such a big part in us period now that it has to be, become a part of everything. Everything is evolving, so that's gonna be a part of it as well. Yeah, but a lot of social media is based on perception, so at the same time, there's a fine line. You gotta understand that. In the same way, I feel like um, old school is the best way for me, but um, if we have some mutual friends and I have to come across you online, then it yeah, works to have somebody to reference and say, hey, is this person actually legit? And that kind of thing. So that works for me. But no catfish. No catfish. Yeah, yeah, no catfish at all. But the old school way is best for me, though. Yeah, I think it plays more into the way society is now. Instant gratification. You can do a lot less work actually going out, having a conversation, meeting somebody, you know, going, going back and forth on the phone than swiping left, swiping right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's so much easier for people, especially how everybody has no time, but then we have all the time to watch Netflix and all that, right. catch up mm. on our, our favorite series. But yeah, I'm definitely traditional when it comes to the sense of dating because I don't mind meeting people in real life because you can't, you can't feel somebody. that same emotion. When you say certain things, you see the way they react to it. Yeah. To me, that's powerful. What are some red flags and or deal breakers for you? What ain't working? Yes, yes. What's unemployed? (laughs) I'll take unemployed for $500. (laughs) (laughs) Show me your cold perspective. Go ahead. Oh, some deal breakers for me would be being unemployed, like you said. (laughs) Now, listen, I understand that people go through hard times. Layoffs happen and whatnot, but you know, I'm an entrepreneur, so and I come from an entrepreneur, so I have the mind state of you better get up and get out and get it, period, point blank. So, if you, you know, if you're unemployed or not an entrepreneur, mm, that might be a red flag for me personally. Um, if you have very, very young children, red flag. Mm, you might have some uh, unfinished business to attend to. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that might be a red flag for me. Flag mm. flag. When people tell you who they are, believe them. If he says he's not looking for a relationship right now and you are, flag, flag. No. Mm-hmm. on the plane. Believe him and don't even entertain it. Yeah. Um, nice to meet you. Okay, we can, you know, be respectful and amicable to one another, <laughs> but uh, that's not what I want. Disrespect. If they're just a person that doesn't seem like a respectful person, period, um, that would be a red flag to me. I mean, 
yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to give you a list of like, you know, <laughs> yeah, your laundry list. <laughs> yeah, I don't give you a laundry list of red flags. I mean, and it's important for ladies to hold to their convictions. I mean, yeah. if it's a red flag, don't entertain it. If you know that you want a relationship, but this man is telling you he does not, then don't do it. Right. So, what about for you, YBB? What are some red flags, deal breakers, in regards to talking to a young lady? Um, insecurities. That's a red flag for me. I, I can't deal with insecurities. Um, Can you elaborate? It's levels to it. It's levels to it. It's like, um, if we can't talk about it, it's an issue for me. Yeah, you got to be able to address you gotta it. You got to talk about it. Like, like, come to me and say, hey, I... Well, hold on a second. Let me, let, me, let me go back. If it's always like, hey, I heard something about you all the time, or hey, I heard something about you all the time, then... That's going to get to me. Like, yeah, you know what? I'm not showing that towards you. So, worry so much. Whatever you heard about, that shouldn't be an issue. I mean, it's in the past. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't happen. But I feel like if, if me and you are at this level and I'm not showing you anything that you heard about, why even bring it up? I guess another thing would be like um, clinginess or like wanting up all my time. Because I like relationships, yes, but at the same time, I have my own space at the same time. I don't want to be like, like, like I'm smart. Like I have to talk to you every. Well, no, I take that back. Like, I don't feel like it's a job. You feel like it's a job. Like, hey, I get up in the morning and I, I got to report to you. Mm-hmm. It's an issue for me. You know, and I think that's something that a lot of ladies don't understand. And I was one of them at one time in my <laughs> life. Truth be told, every woman was one of them. But um, at some point in their life. But I think that's important to, to note that you know, relationships shouldn't feel like a job, you know, you want to have that connection and whatnot, but you don't want it to feel like a job, you don't want the person to feel smothered, so it's important to True. have your own life, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, look at that person as just being a bonus, and friendship in a relationship is really important too, so, you know, you don't want to smother your friends, nah. you know, you, you want to be around the person that you like, and sometimes with women, we tend to want to be around you guys a lot, but... Definitely that. Definitely that. I think, you know, having your own ambition is obviously important. Um, knowing what you want for yourself and standing on that. You know, not faltering, not not letting things get to you or distract you too much. I mean, we all distracted, you know, Instagram, scrolling, what have you. But um, just to be mindful of what's going on around you. All right, well, for me, as far as deal breakers, if you know me, you know, I'm all about positive energy. Like, I'm constantly reading about that kind of stuff. Like, my, my zen, my aura, it, it leans to the positivity. And I've dated a girl that was just real negative. Like, never had a solution for anything. Was always down in the dumps. And that's just going to go against my whole being. So, for, for me, personally, if you're a very negative person, that's, you know, the biggest red flag. That's definitely a deal breaker. Um... I don't mind the, the clinginess per se. There's different levels because I think as as humans, we want to be wanted. We want somebody to show us affection. I think that's that's just how we're wired. If we're not getting affection, then we start thinking like, what's wrong with us? But that's so, different though. Go ahead. Like affection and clinginess is different though. No, but I said there's different levels. Like I want I want the girl that I'm talking to, if we're out in public, she, she's holding on to my arm. She's like showing me that I'm hers. Like, that could be called clingy, but I, I don't mind it. Like, there's different levels. Like, every second of the day, I can't move. Like you said, smothering. Yeah. That's one thing. But the PDA, I, I love that. If I'm talking to, to a girl and she's showing me PDA, some guys don't like that. I'm talking about for me personally. I'm with that. Because that lets me know that. Nah, no, 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 that's what I'm about. I, I didn't mean by that. That, I, that I had no problem, no problem with as okay. far as, you know. Uh, Elaboration, my boy. As far as... <laughs> As far as public effect, is it the PDA? Yeah, public displays of affection. Yeah, as far as that, I have a problem with that. But as far as like, you know, if I'm like, for instance, I'm, I'm with y'all things right now, right? And you just constantly hitting me up. You constantly hitting me up. You constantly hitting me up. I have an issue with that. I can't deal with that. But that speaks, I don't even think that's clinginess. That speaks to more of something that that person's going through. Like, she can't stand on her own, too. Like, Nicole was saying, security, like, you gotta yeah. have your own life. Like, you had your life before. You was in this relationship, yeah. situationship, whatever. 
but I, I think that speaks to a, a deeper rooted issue yeah. that some people and I think that's true some people can't be by themselves true. like they always gotta have somebody yeah. around them to validate their themselves. being right right yeah. if most women are honest with themselves at some point they've been there yeah, yeah. I think of it goes course. both ways I, like I hate when it's like all women do this or all men do this because you can find different examples where the men oh, role was, was given by a female or that female role was portrayed by a man. I mean, I don't, it's not, it's, it's gender fluid for a better, better term. But this right here is going to have a lot of discussion and make sure you hit Jack of all space, CLT, our DM. We're going to be posting a YouTube channel to get some of the feedback from this podcast. Yeah. But this question right here, I'm sure is going to get some people hot. Does dating someone outside of your race still make you for the culture? Uh oh, who got it? The, pe- the got people's it? court want to know, and I don't even know who's who's willing to start this discussion off because I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of lot of conf- conflict in regards to this term. Mm. <laughs> who's brave enough? Who's brave enough? Who's jumping on that leg? Uh. I mean, if I do it, I don't think people are gonna like me. I'm gonna lose some followers. I'm gonna lose some followers today. What does it mean to be for the culture anyway? Because some people might be confused what that term means. Yeah, it's become a trendy term, so it, it, has, it has to be deeper. I would say for the uprising of the people, for the uprising of the black and brown communities. Um, but but you know what? That's that's hard to say because there are people who are Caucasian and Hispanic or whoever that feel like they can identify with the culture as well. So that's really tricky in my opinion, because you're gonna have some feedback on that one where there are a lot of, as I mentioned, black and brown people who are gonna feel like, well, if you date outside of your race, then that means that you are, and you're supposedly for the people, for the culture, then that means that you are not really true to that. So I don't, you know, I really can't, talk to that because I think that's based on your perspective and I mean I've gone out I've hung out with guys outside of my race but that didn't include anything intimate it was just you know friendly hanging out you know but um as far as dating no I love the brothers I ain't gonna front now I have um I've dated a Hispanic they, they basically they they they, they, yeah. they with they us. So you know. They say niggas sometimes too. So. They say it all the time. We all. <laughs> I mean, so it's all the same, you know. But um, no, I, I love brothers. Were these guys that were outside of the culture? Were they like? Were they into the culture? Did they know? Like, did they have any perspective on it? Did they? Could they relate any? Yeah, right. You know, to begin with. So maybe, um, maybe a little bit. They never had a chance. (laughs) I said they never had a chance. (laughs) Probably not. not. (laughs) So for me, Mm. the way my, the way I was raised, you know, a little insight onto my upbringing. I was born outside the U.S. Both my parents were in the military and they've always preached, like, if she loves you, I don't care if she's black, white, brown, purple, you know, it doesn't matter. So when I see the question and if I ask myself, let's say I did end up getting married to a white woman, would I feel like I'm still not for my culture, which is, you know, black Caribbean people, a lot of Hispanics have, you know, I call family. I I don't think that would change. I'm still going to be for the culture because as far as dating, that's, that's like my intimate relationship like that's the person that makes me most happy that's the person right. I love I agree. I agree so if a white woman is making me the most happy not to say that that's my life currently but <laughs> regardless if an Asian woman is you know the person I choose to marry that has nothing to do with all the good work I want to see for my black and brown people absolutely you know what I have to I have to backtrack on that because I know people who have dated and married outside of their race and it doesn't take anything away from them um, who you love is who you love. Who, who you know, will commit to you is who's going to commit to you. And who you're happy with is who you're happy with. That's the bottom line, you know. So, you know, there are people who you could date within your race and it just doesn't work. So that doesn't necessarily have anything to do, in my opinion, with whether they are for the culture or not. You know, um, 
as a black woman, uh, how do I feel about that personally? Again, I, I, I can say, you know, I got to stay neutral on that and just say that it, it's based on the person and whoever makes you happy at the end of the day. That's, that's just say, I mean, I've met people that look like me and I'm a very dark skinned brother. I met black people that are not for the culture. Uh, just anyway, what I was so, ready to get into. Yep. I mean, <laughs> just just to be honest with it. But Banks, Wabibi, what's what's your thoughts? Oh yeah, I've definitely you know there's white people that are for the culture and there's white people that ain't for the culture. I think you kind of know, like you had said earlier, you kind of know what you're dealing with if they can relate to some of the things you're talking about or how they grew up. That can kind of tell you the story of things. But there's also black people that ain't for the culture exactly or or don't care for what's going on out there as if it's not going to affect them. Um, I think it's really just subjective on the person. It's really dependent on that. I agree. I mean, it is subjective to the person. Um, but for me, I feel like, <clears throat> I mean, you can, you can date who you want to date, right? But when it comes down to like the conscious decision to make who you want your wife to be, I mean, for me, I feel like she got to be black. Because like, all I know growing up is my mom, for all kind of purposes, she's, she's African, but still the same damn thing. She black. She held down the household. Pops was in there, and so I'm like, that's my. That's what you look up to. That's what I look up to. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I have dated outside my race, but when it comes to that day to actually marry somebody, because dating and marry is two different things. So when it comes to my to that day to actually marry somebody, she gonna be black at the end of the day for me. That's for me though. You know it's saying? no, it's no right or wrong answer. That's your truth. Yeah, I mean, right. we not, we not, we can't judge. You know what I mean? Like they say, only God can judge. No, nah, you, you are right though. There are some, you know, we got some people who are for the culture who's, who are not black, and you got people who are black who's not for the culture. And um, I mean, we talked about this, you know, off air one time, a couple of times before, and how we have some folks who necessarily. They feel in their mind that their kids are just their contributing toward the culture. They may not be out there doing actively, you know, community service or actively, uh, let's say, just big, big enough, big, big enough, enough that kind of thing. But they feel like, hey, I'm gonna have some black kids. So that's enough for me, for my culture, that kind of thing. I'm adding to, you know, I'm adding another black body to the culture. They, they feel that's enough for them. But um, you know. But if that kid grows up and doesn't have, doesn't know the cultural knowledge they need to know, it could just be a black child, another person that don't know. Could be, it, it could not be. It depends, it depends on who they come across in life, you know. Like, like I know for me, like I said before, um, my pops was in there early on in my life. So one of the big people who I look up to, we all know, I'm Mr. O'Neill. That's kind of my father figure, you know what I'm saying? So when I got to high school, I met Mr. O'Neill. He, who I modeled, was who, who I wanted to be. He was a dope ass dude. He had his black wife, you know what I'm saying? He had these principles stand by, and how he how he treat the the, the the female students in class. I model myself around that. You know what I'm saying? I never told him that personally, but that's what I model myself around. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. O'Neill. You know, he <laughs> I seen him like, yo, this dude, I won't be like that. He he got his shit together. <laughs> I, I hate when people try to paint something as black and white in this world when there's so much gray. And every everything that we discuss, everything that, that can be talked about, it's never just black and white. True. So you might be with you know what, she's black. She she's African or whatever, mm -hmm. but then when it gets down to her holding down a family, her being responsible with her money, her being a high character female, she might not have the same qualities as your mother had, but she's still a black woman. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna be with this black woman just because she's black, not because of what she's bringing to the table. No, of course you got a purpose that to figure out what they're bringing to the table. I mean, the, the, the word you said, the key word is some. So I mean, yeah, they're not all gonna be that way. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Because I love a. Hey, don't get it wrong. <laughs> DJ loves the black women. <laughs> All my girlfriends have been black. I've dated outside my race many times. All my girlfriends have been black. <laughs> it was something that you were just saying about I'm trying to remember what that was exactly. You said something about um, basically what I was going to say was that hopefully you gather enough information dating the person yeah. or beforehand to know what her character was is. You know what I mean? Like True. you can make these kind of I mean you don't know a person until you really know them. So you've been in a relationship with them for mm -hmm. a long time or live with them. You really never know a person. But you can qualify in a sense where you're asking questions, where you're getting to know the person and kind of see 
see where their head is at about different things. You know, if you go and visit a female, you mentioned about cleanliness and how your mother raised you and whatnot. Yeah. If you go to her house and you know she's dirty, <laughs> and, and, you know, red flag. If you if you know that she has children, her children don't look like they're well kept, then flag on the flag. You Straight know, up. so um, you know that she's having. You know, she she's not responsible with her her bills, so I think these are all the yeah. type of things that you need to know beforehand going into a relationship to even know if you want to be with that person. Period, and it's not necessarily a um, it's not a race thing for sure. It, it's a it's a character thing and a um, you know it's a character thing. Period. So that was definitely a heavy topic. And once again, people, we want y'all feedback on that that topic specifically. We want your feedback on the podcast as a whole, but we know that's going to get some people a little burnt up inside about that conversation. It but we're going to move on to a little bit more more positive stuff where where I live at, as far as getting these ladies, and we got to look a, a lady in the room. So for her, it's going to be getting these young gentlemen. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what is game to you, and then how would you describe your game? Deep with it. So what is game to you? Mm. And how would you describe your game? And I'm gonna go ahead and let the product Africa take it take it. <laughs> <laughs> what is game? Um I think game is the ability to respond on the fly. Um it's a wittiness. Um whether you may not be a witty, but speak in your mind and then it captures the other person's, I guess, attention. So um this is the craftiness. That's that's a game to me. Um what is my game per se? I feel like um, for me, I like to use. I guess I have to step the cap the back, but I like to use like the oh, yeah, verbiage. We, we telling we telling all secrets today. I know, I know, we telling all our secrets today. I know. I mean, I don't play games a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't play games a lot, but I mean, I, I guess one of my, my go to things is you know use the verbiage the female is, is giving me. So let's say for instance, like I'm talking to her, she say like say she just used the word "nido," and then so I'm like. Next, I'm gonna say my next sentence. I'm gonna use that word "needle," but uh, subconsciously she don't know what I'm doing. But it's like we relating in that sense. You see what I'm saying? So that's my game. I don't have like a you know. A, she a, shooting. You shooting back? I got I'm you. shooting I back. Like you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody's game is different. Look, gentlemen, yeah, yeah, gentlemen, yeah. please pay attention. So, so mirroring. They right, mirroring. Right, right, exactly. right, right. Mirroring is. I'm going to tell you like this. I, I done known these people in this room for a minute, and they've been very successful in what they do, so you might want to have your notepad on 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 hold. I don't mean no harm by it, though. <laughs> I don't mean no harm by it, though. I don't mean no harm by it, though. But I'm just saying, like, if you're really, if you're really interested in this project, you got to do a little bit of mirroring. That, that goes a part of the, the territory. You got to do a little mirroring. If you don't, then... It's like flirting. It's, it's flirting, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah, exactly. And we're going to get to that in a little yeah. bit. So and it's ahead, a, I think it's also like you just said, mirroring is also a thing of in conversation and being genuine. It's like a um, what can you call that? I had the word for it, but being that I can't come up for, with the word for it. Another example, like um, that's like on comedy. You watch comedy and you see a, a joke that's being made in the, in the in somebody's set, and then they come back later with it. It's like it brings it back to you, brings so it's back. something to Full relate circle. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it's one of those. I feel like it's all an art form of connecting dots, feeling out a vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of personality is definitely involved in that. And, you know, you're feeling out the other person and, and you're finding out where you align with them. So I think that's a big part of it. I also believe the game is to be sold, not told. But, you know, that's another <laughs> conversation. But going deeper into that, though, how would you describe your game? My yeah. game? That's what it is. It's personality. It's art. It's... It's what I'm into. It's a reflection of everything that I'm already into and how I can display that and connect with people on another level with it. Mm. All right, Cole. Cole? What's my game? What's your game? I don't have any games. Oh. Move this yeah. match! Oh. 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 Uh, my game is I'm just me. So you're going to get me, period. Um, wait, 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 wait. But it's game bad, though. That's my thing. I mean, the name. Because it's used I, negatively and positively no, in some like, cases. Because it, right, exactly. Because there's negative factors and then there's mm-hmm. positive factors. Depends so on the person. I guess game, if you want to put it in the context of being.
being on your A game, you know, um, I would say being on my A game, I'm just, you know, on a date, I'm going to look nice. I'm going to smell nice. I'm going to, you know, be positive. Message. <laughs> Message. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, um, I believe in going into situations, excuse me, and I don't mean situationships, but I mean, Ooh. I believe in going into relationships leading with friendship and that can go we're going to go a little deeper into that right but um leading with friendship so when i say i come as me i really do come as me it's my personality i'm not putting on for the first date like trying mm. to you know give my best impression and what have you i'm gonna be me period point blank being genuine it's, it's like yeah. when you start a job you have your 90 day probational period <laughs> you put on a good face for them 90 days <laughs> on the 91st day. day you come in late you, <laughs> totally you fucking different. up everything up <laughs> my lunch 10 minutes longer you know right <laughs> yeah, the best thing to do is going in is being yourself and if that doesn't work then it's just not a good fit period. i'm saying but having game in the beginning is not necessarily not being yourself you, mm -hmm. you think that like you, you, I want to be entertained at the end of the day. Like, like you want somebody who's, I don't know, like 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 um, DJ was saying in the beginning, as far as like setting yourself apart from different people. Mm -hmm. That that essentially that game sets you apart from different folks. Okay, it makes you so memorable. And like you, like you playing a game on somebody, like, hey, right. I just want to smash it. It's the dash worst on game you. that has the negative connotation. Yeah, you know? right. Okay, I think personally. So game, I don't know. It's just so hard to answer that question. But I, I personally, I think that you should be. I don't want to use the word qualifying because that sounds like business like. But you it is a be, business. It yeah. is. <laughs> but you should be asking questions ahead of time before you even go on that date. Before the date? Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> so don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> What's already on wax? What? <laughs> <laughs> in any case, um, I don't know. Date game. I just be you. I think be you, but at the same time, use your judgment. You know, don't get crazy. Don't um, uh, bring up past relationships and whatnot, and talk about your ex, and mm. you know, blast your ex and. You know, all that negative stuff. Yeah, that's a walk off right there. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like sometimes <laughs> those conversations are important, but when it becomes Excessive the point though. of emphasis, like right. yeah, every yeah. time yeah. something happens, there's also a time for that. Right. Like too soon. If I just met you, it's the first date. You're like, <laughs> you're right. all right, you're well, right. this was cool. I talked to you. You still uh, hurt, hurt. Like you gotta <laughs> let that shit. Yeah, go. you gotta walk that off. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, I guess being on your A game is just being the best you you can be and bringing that to the table. Period. So when I say I'm myself, I'm gonna, I'm being myself. I'm, I am on a mission to be the best me I can be, and so I'm gonna bring that energy to the relationship or potential you, relationship. I feel like game is just the ability to be comfortable with members of the opposite sex. When we, when somebody says, "Oh, DJ, you got game," I mean, I'm not gonna say I got game, but I'm very comfortable hmm. being around women. True. I mean, that's because of my experiences that's because of just my personality there's a lot of factors that play into that so when i think of game i just think about the ability to be comfortable with members of the opposite sex you know no awkwardness no i don't think no girl's going to ever accuse me of being creepy i mean I, don't quote me on that but it hasn't happened yet how would i describe my game yeah i don't even want to diverge how i do my game but yeah, yeah. hey we, we all diverge bro Go it's ahead. all good it's all good but like I said earlier, attention to detail. If I'm talking to a girl in the process, she might mention something about, oh yeah, you know, when I was a young young girl, I used to do ballet. A brother like me, I'm gonna look up ballet in Charlotte. If anything's coming, <laughs> we're going, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna send you a text. What you doing on Friday? Oh, you available? I there's this ballet group coming in. You wanna go? Oh my God, yeah, because I, I paid attention. My attention to detail was, was that nice with it. Or if she mentions the type of food that she likes, I'm trying to find them kind of restaurants in Reference the city. How to Be a Player by Bill Bellamy, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites, to be exact. One of my favorites, to be exact. But nah, just my game, I, I mean, 
to even call a game would be doing it a disservice because it's not doing anything to be just paying attention. Yeah, it's it's really just connecting the dots. Like that's one of my favorite terms. My thing is this though: is that for every girl though? Is that's a girl you're interested in? You keep doing that qualifier because and you have to have that qualifier because because every girl don't deserve that. This is my thing. Yeah. If I'm going to spend time with somebody, I'm doing my research on them. Not to say that it's going to lead to something. It could be just a homegirl. Like like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Setting yourself apart. So even if it's somebody that I'm not romantically interested in, if she tells me she likes doing ATV, like she's a, a thrill seeker, yeah. and I want to hang out with her, if I say let's go to the bar, she might be like, you know what, uh, I'm going to just, oh, I got something to do or might make an excuse. But if I know my homegirl's a thrill seeker and I say, yo, there's a place that you can do skydiving like outside of Charlotte past Concord and I give her the information, you know what? She's going to be like, well, this guy was going to take me out. Nah, fuck that. I'm going to go do skydiving with my homeboy. So it's not even about just using using the skill for girls that you're trying to get with. It's just for anything. Like anybody that's in your life, you should want to make them feel special at that. I mean... So- Right, right. I was just gonna say, so so in essence, game would be the thing that you use to gain interest in the person. Would you would you guys say that? I, see, I'm about to tell all my secrets. I just told yeah. this to a young lady the other day. For me, the the way I would classify my game is if I can have this girl think about me when I'm not around. That means yes, what I'm doing, doing right, well. Yeah. I'm doing, doing something good. right, right like. Right. After we leave the date, after we leave a phone conversation and she's going about her regular day and she's thinking about something that I said or she's thinking about that place that I took her to or that experience she had it's with a trigger, me. trigger, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I got that. But my thing I is, got is, that. It can't be for every girl, though. Why not? But my, but my thing is, look, I'm going to tell you why. So, for the girl you're not interested in, right, you're doing that shit for, she's going to start liking you even more. She's going to gain feelings for you more. And then so she's like, oh, you know what? Hey, I feel like we should take this to the next level. Like, nah, you my homegirl. She gonna be hurt by that. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm just gonna be honest with you. At the end of the day, you gotta do what's best for you. Nigga. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> even if, look. It, does, right. it doesn't even have to be somebody that you're doing all these things for. I've had situations where I was simply nice to a young lady. Just saying hello. Like, not even having exchanging numbers. But you just being a nice person in this world. And somebody develops feelings for you. You can't, can't control yeah, that. And they on you. you so, can't, yeah. nice though, bro. But you can only control what you can control. I can't control anybody having feelings for me. I can control my response to them saying, right. you know what? I want to take this deeper. And I can say, you know what? Let's entertain this. Or, you know what? I just see you as a friend. It happens all the time. Example. Yeah. You're interested in a young lady. Yeah. You're putting in this time and money. Exactly. Wining and dining. And you're like, you know exactly. what? so-and-so, I really like you. You know, I'm trying to take this deeper. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I just look at you like a, a homeboy, like a best friend. You're going to be hurt, but you're going to move on? Like, you going to move, like... Hey, cash you, me that money back. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt. I mean, any t- I mean, what person in this world puts in some effort with somebody trying to take it to another level, and if it doesn't go as planned, who's going to be like, you know what? I'm cool with that. Like, we had a conversation off air. Yeah. I'm the type of person, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to grab my basketball and I'm going to the next court. Like, I'm okay with that. You'd be surprised. I've, I've seen people, I'm not going to say firsthand, secondhand maybe, I've seen people invest into a relationship, a potential relationship, when they really didn't want anything. So that's a real slippery slope because, it is. you know, if you are... Hold on, but explain that to me. When you're saying invest in a relationship that they don't really want... So what are the things well, that they're I mean, doing? Like, okay, so not necessarily investing in a relationship, but yeah. Uh, well, spending doing, time, like, like spending time. So, like for instance, you said going out your way, like picking out something that's someone's favorite color. They mentioned something. Yeah, what to detail. Like, I, yeah, being very detailed, mm-hmm. right? I've seen people do that, and then they don't. They didn't really want the relationship. It was just like a way to bring the person's. Um, uh, wall, 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 uh, down, wall down or yeah, guard down. Yeah. You know, so like that's really. So that's why were you saying they're trying to be this? Like really? Hold on. Uh, are you saying they were doing it to be deceitful? It's like if I'm getting to know somebody, like what's the quickest way to 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 build that bridge? Mm-hmm. Paying attention to what they're saying when we're having conversations. So if 
you're telling me something that's. But what's the bridge to the bridge to where though? A friendship. Every every time you get involved with a young as me, I'm a man. I'm a heterosexual male. Every time I have an interaction with a female, doesn't mean it's going to lead to me being physical, me being in a relationship. I I do believe that a man and a woman can be friends without it being something more. I'm the same way too. I, 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 yeah, I so agree to that. even if I do that for a homegirl, doesn't mean that it's going to lead to something Nigga. more. But they'll get confused though. Why are you wait, waiting all this time to get to the to know that they, they, they know their they know their shit? Take them out to. But why? Okay, yes. So, why, why so what's the point that? of talking to somebody that's a friend? Like, Nigga, <laughs> we we friends, right? But I I seem to know all your details and shit. Or what we're you, two what males. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. That's different. That's a bad example. That's a bad example. Please uh, give me a better example. <laughs> Thank you, Juicy J. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I got female friends who I don't know what their interests are in, like as far as you know, saying let's say for instance, like what they like detail wise. We hang out, we can get up, go to the bar, whatever, party functions, whatever, cool. But I'm not sitting there trying to find out what's your favorite color, what you like to do on the weekdays, you know, days off. I'm not knowing that because I don't, I'm not invested to know all that stuff. Why get invested in all that and then try to pursue it more than that, more than the friendship? Why? I wish we had the drop for the rewinds because we've all agreed that. A strong relationship is built on a friendship. True, but I'm saying. So no, so let me let me elaborate. So if even just, even if you're not per se looking at that individual in the moment yeah. as a potential mate, you're still getting to know them. Like there's times where I could be dealing with somebody and I have a homegirl. Like I've heard stories like this. I mean, has it happened for me? I can't say that it has, but I've heard people tell me where I was dating this person and it didn't work out, and then they ended up dating somebody oh, that girl. was started as a friend because they had. All That's, of those they experiences, they, they had that foundation. Yeah. We go about the foundation. If Even with a building, the skyscrapers uptown, if that foundation is not strong, how can it get up to 70, 80 stories tall? You have to have a strong foundation for anything to be built. That ain't me, bro. Like, if we start off with a friend, we're going to be friends forever in life. Like, we, that shit ain't changing. And I think that's a lot of men, to be honest with you. Like, if they're honest, some uh, feel exactly that same way. Yeah. Like if I walk into it with the intention of being your friend, we friends, then that's what it's going to be. It doesn't even matter if you're sexual with the person. Correct. If that's for, if it's if that's what it is, then that's, that's what, what it is. Be. And no matter if you what's that mean going around, you could you could fry his chicken in some uh, diamond drip oil. <laughs> <laughs> you're still going to be his friend. Friend. friend the I'm, I mean, I gotta disagree with that because <laughs> they, things change. Like in in life, you might start off with somebody being a, being just a friend, and then you see some qualities that you were wanting to make. Like you're gonna know this person still, and you're like, you know what? Damn! Like I never noticed so and so has this about them, or you see them in another relationship. Like to me, it's it's very fluid. It's very fluid. Like you just can't once again. Going to that whole concept of black and white. Right. You can say, you know what? I met this girl. She's cute or whatever. But we're just going to be friends. Fuck the bullshit. We're always going to be friends. Then things could change. Like, time goes on. People do change. Like, I hate when people say people don't change. No. People change when they want to change. You can't change anybody out here in this world. But when people go through certain things, they mature. Hopefully, I mean, the whole point of life is to progress. At least in how I see things from, from my vantage point. In life, if you're not going forward, if you're not gaining some more wisdom, if you're not just learning new things about yourself to be a better person, you're not doing this whole thing right. Mm -hmm. To continue on with that that type of theme, we're going to move on to this. The art of flirting. We're talking about the do's and the don'ts. So why don't you guys start with that? Uh Uh-oh. She's trying to get some intel. Yes. Yes. We're going to use each other today, though. I mean, that's what it's here for. I mean, mm. the whole point of this podcast is just to to learn. Like, we're giving our perspectives out to the world. Hopefully, people give us feedback and we can be better people for it. But I, I'll go ahead and uh, start this thing off. So, for me, I won't even... I mean, a lot of my homegirls say I'm very flirtatious. But I feel like it's more of a subtle thing. Like, I'll, I'll do certain things, like a little touch. Like, I know it's... A different time in this world, but I'm not saying I'm grabbing somebody's ass, I'm grabbing somebody's breasts, nothing, nothing disrespectful like Me that. Me too. 
But let's say I'm talking to a young lady and I might touch her on the shoulder. Like I'm seeing how she's reacting to me even oh, yeah, touching a subtle her. Shit. Like yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. to me that's flirting. Like yeah, yeah. the art of flirting. But the dudes and those like I know one of the homegirls when we we're asking about the approach, a lot of the things was don't be overly sexual. Right. Like I feel like with men to women interaction, there's always gonna be that undertone of True. a sexual nature. But if you're you know, setting your flag on that, everything is a sexual question, of course that's gonna turn a young lady off. Of but let's say she's wearing something nice and once again not being a pervert about it, but I'm like, you know what? The way you, you wearing that dress, it looks nice. So she might like, yeah, I want somebody to acknowledge that. Right, like you put right. that dress on for you a reason. Yeah, but I'm not I'm that. not making it the <laughs> the point of emphasis in our conversation. I like, went with that far though, but uh, yeah, I mean, once again, I'm talking about me, <laughs> like my flirting. Like, it don't have to be like that. If I say, you know what, you look nice today. Exactly. Like that that's yeah. subtle to say subtle. what you wear, mm-hmm. mm. I can, you know, I appreciate what you got on. But mm. it's real subtle, like, you know, you look nice today. Boom. That's a dress. Not. That's a dress dress. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> big up high high dance when you doing it. Dress dress. But also with me, just with me, the the eye contact. I feel like I do well with that. Like, I'll look at a young lady, but I'm not staring. Like, some guys will just be focused on a young lady, looking at her, making it awkward. So, I'm, I'm going to carry on like I'm carrying on in the function. But if I look at you and I see that I have some eye contact, in my mind, that's like a little mental note. Like, okay, make the there, play. there might be in- interest there. There might not. You know, everybody that knows me know my favorite rapper is Fabulous. And he had a line in the song. And it said... It might be something in her eye, but to me, she winking. So that's how I go. That's how I move with it. Like, mm. if I look at her and something might be in her eye, and like she winking, I'm like, okay, she might be interested. Now, the the way it's going to play out if something happens or if it doesn't is the, my approach. So it's always on us being the males or us being the person that's approaching right, the, right. the people. So she might not be winking at me, but if I go over there saying some craziness, She's not even going to entertain me. Yeah. Like, even if I approach her, it might not end up with me getting the number, me getting any information that I want. But if I go up there respectfully, you know, with some good conversation, she might have a boyfriend, but in the back of her mind, oh, that guy, was he was cool. And that goes a long way in it, too. Mm-hmm. So that that's what it is for me. But as far as the don'ts, I definitely don't be bringing up no sexual stuff. Like, that. Uh, that's I play. like <laughs> that. that's a that's no-no play. for me. So I was going to ask, what do you think that women could do? Like, how would you, what, what are some things that women can do to flirt? Or what do you, th- what do you think that is, what's a deal breaker for you for flirting? Or, I, I don't, I'm not asking this question the right way, so we're going to have to, but. I think I kind of, I feel you. I but what you're saying, though. For, for me, it's, it's wrong for, me. For, for, for flirting for a woman yeah. is, to be open, like, and I mean, and that's that's even probably the wrong verbiage to use. Like the ways, I feel like women flirt a lot more subtle than men. But let's say I'm I approach you, and you're allowing me to give to get some extended time. That's a form it's of flirting. Because yeah, yeah, if a woman's not interested, yeah, she's not she's going, going back. back you short, wanna know? Yeah. You gonna she know? You short. So yeah. if I'm talking crazy and you still laughing at my corny ass jokes and you still being in my presence. I yeah, mean, you with that. Yeah. that. That could be a form of flirting. Because I feel like for women, is, we really do have to be subtle because anything over the top, then it changes the dynamic. The perception. You know? like so, it's, it's a double standard. Let's, hold on. Let's just put it out there. Let's. It's a double standard. If if a woman is overly nice to a, a young man, she's going to be called a hoe or whatever. So right, we, we do right. understand it's like that. a hoe, but it's just like, it's just a turn off. Oh, she's like, easy. She's, she's easy. easy. Yeah, it's, it's just a turn off. Like, you can't approach me. Well, that's that's your own personal thing. Like women, me, you can approach me all day. Yeah. We gonna have some good conversation. Like mm-hmm. if I'm not checking for you, then it's, it's a reason why I'm not checking for you. But, but, but it's like you just can't approach me. That's, that's for me though. I think it depends on the setting too. Because if we out and we having a good time, you know how we be going out and Bro, shit get still, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> still stop it. David Chappelle, time out. Wait a second, wait a second. Like old girl, old girl. <laughs> like old girl from, from Slate. <laughs> like a girl from Slate who, 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 who went to Slate at one time me you and Banks she walked up on me she's like hey you reach your number yeah that didn't do shit for me though that boy was scared what that did, didn't do shit for me though what though what could she have said instead of hey can I get your number what could she have said to pique your interest what could she have said um damn 
And, that, so, and after like, you so answer that, I got an example too. Maybe he had a conversation with you. It's pretty Maybe. Up it's basically the same, same thing as a girl asking you straight up for the number. But let's say we had a club, we had a party, yeah. we had sweet for one of these day parties, yeah. and a girl comes around, she grabs your hand, start dancing on you. That's the to me, that's the same how exact thing. How exactly? How is it different? It's the same thing. Like she's taking the she initiative, initiative. Yeah, to yeah, get yeah. your attention instead of saying verbally, "Hey, can I get your number?" Like she's saying, "Yo, I'm interested." Now it's well, on you. Like the ball's she, in your court. She actually went harder because she spoke with action. She ain't even. Yeah, like well, you know, hey, anybody that knows me knows I'm about to action, boss. <laughs> <laughs> like Marsha. <laughs> let me let me uh, paint the picture. She grabbed my hand, danced me. Right? Cool, cool, cool. Now let's say example A. I start talking to her, right? I said, oh, hey, da-da-da, what's your name, da 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 We talk a little bit, ask for a number. That's different. Example B, she start talking to me first, let me get your number. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit I'm like, nah, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I'm coming to <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so what, what makes you, what makes you gotta, have it? I gotta start it, though. I got to start it. Though. I gotta start it. You just, just that simple fact. That's what, for me. For okay, me. no, I'm, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking you. That simple fact, I got to start it. Okay. If you start it, uh, nah. Okay. If you, if you have to start it, I'm not checking for it. But if I'm checking for it, I'm going to start it off gate. You, you ain't got to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and go in for it. You ain't got to worry about it. But sometimes it's that little stuff they do like that that catches your attention that even put them on the radar. That's what I'm saying. No, no. no. Grabbing my hand and dance with me is, is, is catching my attention. After the dance is over with, it's up for me to go ahead and talk to the conversation. Initiate the conversation. Hey, you okay, know what? All right, all right. What's your name? Da, 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 da. It's for me. If you, if you use the conversation first, you're not, you, you didn't get my attention. You see what I'm saying? Oh, she wasn't dancing, right? <laughs> the wine was uh, the F minus. <laughs> if you have to start it up, if you have to jump start the conversation, then I'm, I'm not interested in it. If, if I do it, then of course I'm interested. No, but we live in 2019. This is the equality for all. I Maybe the girl's like, you know what? I want this brother from the Congo and I want to make it mine now. You won't get me. <laughs> you ever see that, that commercial that JG Wentworth? It's my money and yeah, I want it right. now. Like, she wants it now. She don't want to wait for you to come and get her. Like, she, she saw what she wants. She got the eye of the tiger and she going after her. Like, I respect it. If you guys are, like, built to be the hunters, exactly. then that's how, how I, you know, I think that it changes the dynamic or so I've heard. Thank you. I'm not going to turn away a young lady because she came up to me like that shows a lot of courage she came up to me and said something to me first i'm not gonna be like well no now i'm interested because you know the chase is no longer there nah if i look at her and i'm like you know what it might be something i respect it i might have a letter but you got to respect that like i said at the same time because if she's bringing that kind of every girl out there don't have that kind of energy to bring that to you so if she's bringing that to you i'm gonna at least party with i'm gonna see what she's talking about is this my mind frame is she bringing that energy to you she bring it to the next nigga. But See, that's, that's, that's the wrong. I ain't worried about the next nigga. Hold on, can we get the pump and brakes on that? <laughs> hey, hold on, time out. Time hey, out. That's how I mean, think it. That's, hey, that's, that's, that is a mindset right. I think people have, but at the same time, how do you know that you girl's just not know. interested in you only? Like, she saw something in you, like, she was like, you know what? He he set himself apart from the rest of these niggas in this spot, nigga, and I don't know though? what's up with wait, him. Wait, wait, we're in a club. How, though? No, okay, you don't so know. Maybe, so maybe not a club, but right. let's just say that she saw something she liked because I've been in a position where I've, I've reached out to somebody and I took the initiative first, but it didn't work out. You know what I mean? And it didn't necessarily mean, though, that I always did that because I did not. I didn't always do that. You know what I'm saying? So can't really have that mindset that that's just what she does. If she talks to you, then she tries to talk to everybody because it might be, depending on the situation, it might be that she saw something in you personally. No doubt. She was interested in you. No doubt. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, the next person that comes around, she might go up to and have to strike. It takes a lot of nerve. Like, you guys look... You, you Liquid guys, courage is everything, though. What you mean? That does affect me sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, no what you mean? You're not, dying, you're not trying to get chose. <laughs> So for me, Banks and YB, how can we stand out for the crowd? And then LaCole, how can women stand out? Like, everybody's in the same tank, you know, the same fish market. We're, we're in that same ocean. It's a lot of fishes running around here. So how do potential people that are interested stand out in your eye? Men can stand out by taking interest, asking the right questions. What are the um, right questions? We got some brothers out here that, that are not good at conversation. One of the Reoccurring things I got it's from my homegirls. 
but what <laughs> what but what does that mean? Like you can say get some conversations because so what are some specific things that let's say a, a young brother listening to the podcast right now can say, you know what? Let me ask this next girl I'm about to talk to these type of things. Um, maybe asking her about, you know, not necessarily well, her interests. What about what you about, doing every 30 minutes? No, not what you're doing. W-Y-D. Doing. W-Y-D. No, W-Y-D. W-Y-A. W-Y-A. Um, phone calls. Let's get back to that. Um, phone X, calls. Facts. Text. You cannot get to know wait, wait, her. Wait, 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 wait. Message. Wait, wait, wait. Uh-oh. You need that drop. Oh, that's, that's, um, <laughs> we got to preface that, though, because, like, a phone call is not warranted all the time. Let's say, for instance, it's like, y'all both at work. Yeah, nobody they, should be they, calling they, you while you're at work, they, though. Right? Hey, hey, we, we gotta purpose it, though. We gotta, we gotta purpose it, though. I'm just saying. I think sometimes short and sweet is cool, too. True. So, okay, sometimes text messages, I think, are are to be used for the purposes of, you know, not for real conversation. Just you quick know, convenience. Just quick convenience. I'm pulling up. I'll be at you on in the way. 30 minutes. I'm so, on so, the way. So, 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 question. You know? So, you prefer phone conversations over Texas? Yes. Yes. Okay. I do. Right. Um, I, I feel like that that comes to play with the generation. I feel like the younger people, well, mm. I'm 32. My era, we're used to being on the phone, running up our parents' phone bill because... We done found a nice young lady we liked, and now I'm on the phone, phone for many hours. <laughs> and somebody click, you know, hey, put the phone, I'm talking. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I grew up in an era where you had to have some kind of conversational right, skills. Right. Yeah. But now, you know, it's it's a little bit different. And even people of my age, my generation, are kind of... Conforming to com- now. Exactly. What thing Perfect is this, term. though? What do you prefer, though? Text or phone conversation? If a girl calls me, I'm answering. No, what do you prefer? I prefer a call. A call. Banks. I prefer FaceTime, matter of fact. Oh, wait, wait. Rewind. Hi. Look, <laughs> if you FaceTime me, I'm going to answer 95% of the time now. Right. <laughs> Banks? Oh, definitely the call. Um, the call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do his FaceTime as much. I'm doing a little more now lately, but um, I, I, I hate getting the... Um, what you doing and then you like nothing and then it's like FaceTime like oh shit <laughs> I kind of was doing something but I wasn't doing you're nothing not gonna, nothing yeah but I definitely prefer to call it goes back to that and um I feel you know text messages like you said they they're short term and you know it's convenient it's short you can't yeah and then you can't you can't really interpret text sometimes the way the conversation is supposed to go when you're talking on the phone with somebody, you're getting a conversation, you're getting detail, you're getting background information, um, you're getting clarity on everything, so it, it's more inclusive. So I'm different. I'd much rather. Back in the day, it used to be a whole lot of more phone call conversation, but I'm, I'm rarely in one spot, so texting works for me, but the best form for me is actually face-to-face conversation. That's the best one for me all day, face-to-face. Like, I would set aside time to go have a face-to-face with you. Like, no problem. He said, hey, let's get up. I'll go ahead and get up with you to go have, have a face-to-face. But as far as a phone conversation, I'm like, let's, that's the last thing in my shit. So it's like, it's face-to-face, then it's a text, then it's phone. That's, that's how it works for me. Can I move around too much? If I was moving around that much, then I'd say, okay, cool. I'll sit down and have a phone conversation with you. But texting is the best. It's kind of the second best thing for me. But ultimately, it's the face-to-face conversation. I put my phone aside and... I wouldn't even care who's calling me or texting me. And I'll sit there with you and have a, a whole four hour, five hour, six hour conversation face to face with you. Easy. All right, so getting back to that topic though, standing out. What can a man or a woman do to stand out? I mean, because that's really what it is. Like, once again, we're going to big up the, the, the great Mr. O'Neill. And he told us, you know, a long time ago that everything that a man does. It's for the attention or affection of a woman. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think that it's uh, subjective. For me, a man can stand out by just his own intelligence and his own passion for life or whatever he's doing. That sets him apart. The you know the small things, paying attention to detail. Gotta, gotta have it. You mm-hmm. gotta, gotta have it. Got to. Pay attention to detail. Yeah. So that lets us lets us know that you're paying. You're attention listening. To yeah, us. yeah. You're listening. So for y'all, for us, I should say, what are some things that we do to stand out? Then what are some ways that women can stand out? Because I know, if 
for the ladies listening, they definitely want to know that as well. For the women, I look for a strong sense of self, um, ambition, awareness, style, mm. just how you move, your approach to things, positivity, you know, your outlook on everything. Just because something negative is happening don't mean you got to be negative about it. Like, you know, um, you know, you, you are you can change your circumstance if your attitude is there. So um, attitude, definitely. As far as myself, I like to apply those same things or be a reflection of things that or see a reflection of what I'm trying to do myself. So that's how you can kind of be on the same level as somebody else. As far as for me, I feel like, um, of course, for guys that stand out, attention to detail, of course. That's one major thing. For women, for me, is um, support. You know, and encouraging words. Uh, speaking big. life into the guy you with. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that, that's a lot to somebody. What if the nigga ain't shit? Like, what are they supposed to do? If the nigga ain't shit, what are you doing in the first place? Be shit on your own. That's what I'm saying. Like, Be not shit on your own. Don't. <laughs> All right, for me, I mean, it's, it's a lot of things that I feel like I try to do the stand out. You know, at one point in time, if we ever went out to a function, I'm coming out of shirt and tie because I know everybody's not doing that. So, and you, I, it, you it always part of shirt and tie. It served me well though. That's the thing. Like I'm, I, I, I'm that kind of person. I'm trying to Mr. see shirt and tie. What's the landscape? All right, so let me do something different. And the girls will come up to me like, "Oh, you got a shirt." You know, just a little conversation that could be, it could spark something for it to be a little bit deeper. But I'm always trying to go against the grain just to stand out a little bit more like if a girl gets to talking to me anyway she's gonna see i'm a little bit different than most guys she's talked to but i need her to have a reason to come even be in my my area so i'm doing a little bit doing something to stand out in that regards but for a woman and i tell girls all the time i don't and i know a lot of dudes would probably not agree with me on this but i don't mind taking a girl paying for her we go out have a hundred fifty dollar bar tap whatever i don't care i mean it's money. We all making money at this point in time. You'll get it back. Can't all die time, with it. But no, I'm saying, if I go out with a chick and she's like, you know what? I got it. Let me tell you something. She might get the ring that <laughs> night. Like, I'm, not used to, I'm not used to a girl saying, you know what? I got you. Because girls girls are usually the ones, like I said, right. the men are the ones that go out and get it. So yeah, yeah, if yeah. I say I'm taking you out, I'm going to pay for it. I'm not expecting you to pay. But if I'm pulling out my debit card, <laughs> and you're like, nah, put that away. I got it. Nigga, you, you, you got to you clutch my you, you have, you have <laughs> oh, set yourself <laughs> apart from the chicks. rest of the chicks. Not to say... I'm thinking I'm about you tomorrow already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm texting you with the good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I reach in my wild, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about you. <laughs> nah, but I, I say that to say this. I'm not expecting you to pay of course every not, time not. moving forward. But just for you offering... To take care of it, like especially if we've been dealing with each other, oh, for you putting yourself out there, say, so you know what, you've been holding me down. You know, we we've been kicking it. You know, every time we go out, you have no problem paying for me, and you say, you know what, babe, I got you. Of course, you, you know want to stand up. For for me though, even even so, like even for her to say, hey, I got you, but I still end up paying. It's it's, it's enough for me. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. If you say, hey, you know what, nah. Yeah, you're willing it. to. No, no, just no, the no, willing no, to be. The willing, the willingness of you to say, hey, I got you. I respect that. Yeah, I feel that. Okay, at the end of the day, like, no, I don't want to be for shit. But at the end of the day, for you to say, hey, I got you, I respect that. <laughs> All right, so we can move on to this one because this one's more for the for the gentleman. Mm. You know, we was in the barbershop the other day, and a statement was made. And I'm like, you know what? That's something I feel like we need to elaborate more. Mm-hmm. So a comment was made about a woman being bad now. For the people that don't know, I'm not saying she's being bad like it's a negative thing, like being bad like she she's top notch. Yeah. So when the statement was made, I had a question. I'm like, so what makes a woman bad? Because initially, and I'll start it off, when I hear somebody say that a girl is bad, I feel like it's only in a physical, physical. aspect. Mm. So I think that's I where it stemmed from. Yeah, I want to go deeper than that then. Like because physical phase, like if you're with somebody and you get with them for the rest of their life, I mean <laughs> that fat ass and titties, they gonna leave gonna at some point. Like, dude, it ain't gonna be what it drop. what it was at you know twenty to thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are other qualities that can make a woman bad? For me, I feel like their ability to always wanting to learn something new, to experience something different, 
that makes you better my eyes. Like if you if you're not close minded and you want to learn something different, you want to go and experience different things. I like that. I love that. Cause I'm the same way. I wanna. I always wanna pick up a different book. It might be the the subject that I'm actually you know. I, it, it might be a subject I prefer, but I wouldn't pick up a different book and read it. I wouldn't go different different things that I had done before. So I want my me to do the same thing. Constantly learning, evolving as a person. I don't want you to be the same stagnant person. Like that's not for me. I agree, but the term bad, I feel like it doesn't stretch. I feel like it's been. It was put in this category, like you Oops. hear bad, yeah, I feel like it's all physical. It's like the term bad is like bad bitch, like you hear that. So that's attributed with that. So when you think of that, it's all physical. Now, I agree mm. with what you're saying. I, mm. I agree with what you're saying because that's what I look for at the same time, mm. but I feel like it's another term for that. But true. specifically what we're talking about, I feel like that's just physical nature. I'm saying true, go true, deeper though. Like, it what, gets you in the yeah. door though, but it don't keep you in the building. It gets you Ooh, in the door. I like that. Girl, it don't keep you Repeat in the door. Repeat that, that while we rewind. It, listen, your looks get you in the door, but it doesn't keep you in the building. Message. <laughs> it don't. So what's the term for the female that keeps you in the building? Like, it's got to be, like, another term for that, then. It's still I think bad, you could... though. I think, in my opinion, you bad as fuck. If you, <laughs> 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 if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to learn new things, you're open-minded about new things, you wanted to try different things, you want to travel different places, you, you bad as fuck to me. But just to ensure that you, just cause you look good, it don't do it for me. It's like, okay, cool, that's all right. You look good. We have a few conversations. I'm going to ghost you after that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm going to ghost you after that because ain't nothing more, ain't no substance. I need, oh. I need that substance. That's, that's you pay for that big booty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need the substance. <clears throat> I need that. The term bad has been mostly used to describe the physical attributes. And, I mean, that's just the way it's been. But with me being the person that I am, I'm looking more than that. Like, looks will fade. Like, accident could happen. Like, that could change in an instant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, True. if I say some chick is bad, I'm going deeper than just the physical, going deeper than the surface. And for me, I mean, it's it's culture. Like you say, the open-mindedness. Y'all know me. Like, what my family look like. I got Asians. I got culture. Hispanics. I got Blacks. <laughs> I, look, mm -hmm. I don't care. All. If you open to other people's culture, like you said, if you're open to learning different things, if you're open to experiencing something, being out your comfort zone, that is going to work wonders for me because I'm the same way, just the way my life has been. Being, I, I used to live in a country where it was probably a handful of black people, and damn sure in my grade, I was the only black person in that grade, not mm. knowing the language. So I can definitely attest to the, the problems that are going on in this country when all these Latinos are trying to get in here. Oh, well, these people don't speak English. They shouldn't be send them back to Mexico. They're not all Mexicans for one. But I've lived in an Asian country where I didn't speak the language. Motherfuckers weren't trying to send me send me back to America. So I, I know what that feels like. But just having that experience of being one of the few black people in an Asian country and seeing how I was treated, it, it I have a you know different perspective when it comes to those kind of issues. So just me going through that, me having the allies that I had that were the native people there, it brought me closer to people's culture. And y'all know me, I'm always open to trying somebody's culture. It just, it makes you well-rounded. So for exactly. a girl that's open, like if I say, hey, we're gonna go to this Asian spot. Well, no, I just wanna get chicken wings and fries. And I know I always use that <laughs> example. It's, it's, it's funny, I'm joking when I say that. But if she's like, yeah, let's do it. Like, yo, this shit got octopus. Fuck it, let's go eat the octopus. Like, trying something new, like, being fearful in that sense, mm -hmm. that's always going to be something that puts you, puts you apart from other girls. Because if you're willing to take that chance with something so simple as your culinary, let's mm -hmm. say you have bad habits, you might be more willing to say, you know what, I'm trying to be a better right. person. Exactly. Let me learn to get out of these bad ha habits. So I always fuck with that. I always rock with that. All right, so, Cole? Cole. If you were you and your homegirl see a nice young gentleman, three piece suit in it, you like, damn, he's handsome or damn, he bad. Cause I know y'all be using the same terms we use. <laughs> so what what makes a young man bad to you and your crew? Like, what qualities are you looking for that's beyond the physical? Mature, you know, mentally mature, uh, or emotionally.
emotionally mature. That's the key, right? Yeah. You know, so um, so if I were to see someone three piece suit, first of all, the package. Okay, so we're talking about the package. The package would be a plus. Uh, what comes out of his mouth, of course. Uh, can he hold the conversation? Does mm. he, you know, speak uh, intelligently? Can he mix it up in different types of crowds? That's big. Cold switch, young people. Work Cold the room. switch. Yeah, Cold you gotta switch. work the room. You gotta be you know able to, to work the room. room. You gotta cultures. be able to move with different cultures. You know, uh, that's just me personally. Um, so yeah, that's important. I would say that's all around that. Just a man who is just a, a leader. A leader is 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 fly to me. Mm. All right. As we continue on, what are places to meet quality people? And since we have men and women in the room, so for the men. Where are places to meet quality women? Lacole, where are places to meet quality men? Beats me because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing the show. I don't really know. I'm like, well, I'm going to be on to something new. Um, well, for the, list, say- for the listeners of the podcast, please reach out to us, the women. Let yeah. let us know where the, where the places are to meet quality men so we can get it to the masses. But, um, So where where would you go that's not the club? Like not to say per se in Charlotte, but what are the types of places that you would Maybe go to? A lounge. I would go to a lounge. Um, professional networking events. Ooh. You know? okay. Say that again. Say that professional again. Professional networking mm. events. I don't think too many of us are going to those like networking type joints. So I, I definitely agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Ain't none of us perfect, you know. True. So yeah, you want any place that you can mix it up around like minds or people just on a different type of vibe that are you know looking to do better in life. I think that that's always a good place to start. All right, Mm. thanks. What it do? With hearing this subject, I didn't think of it, but now hearing it, like I'm thinking of different places I have met people and. It's usually related to something I'm interested in, obviously music. So like there's been different music venues I've gone to. I've met a lot of people there, you know, because if you got if you down with enough of a vibe to get down with some live music or seeing somebody perform, you know, there's going to be some common stuff there. So that's that's a good place to meet people at. A message for the women that are interested in banks. Get to those music venues. You might see the brother out there. You might you might see me in the back. Music (laughs) venues. Is that it for you though, Banks? Like, um, I'm gonna peel the onion back a little bit more. What you got? The, lim- the women folk want to know. Imperial Lounge is cool. You know, that's live music though. So, I mean, and jazz um, in it. Yeah, you know, that jazz, it's another sound. That do something else for you. So, those are my t- my kind of spots. I like the vibes out there. Walk to the B? Um, I don't really have a spot to be real with you. It's just that you gotta just, it could be anywhere. It could be the grocery store. It could be, I don't know. Talking Walmart? No, Wilkinson Boulevard? Definitely, definitely not on no Sunday. Nah, 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 definitely nah, not on no Sunday. No, nah, no, nah, Walmart and Wilkinson Boulevard. Fresh out of church, you might catch him. Or when that EBT hit. Nah, you can't nah, go on them nah, days. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. I mean, I just gotta run across. If I run across and you just catch my eye, then okay, okay cool. That's for me. That's just for me. I don't really have a, a per se spot. It's just, you just gotta catch my eye. You gotta pick my interest. It could be in person. Um, it could be online. It could be, I don't know. It's just, you gotta just catch my interest. I don't know what it is, man. Not on spot per se. See, I definitely want to, you know, big up what you were saying initially. It can really happen anywhere. Anyway, right, yeah. right. I've, I've had long friends. My interest. I've had friends that said they've met somebody in a Publix. Yeah, it, it hasn't happened for me per- personally, but I can see it happening because if you're going to the grocery store, you know, everybody got to get groceries, That's and true. it might be a woman that you see that you think is nice, and it's mm-hmm. like, damn, and you know, it's there. But do you take the courage to go speak to them? That's one thing. That's true. So it could definitely happen at. You know, whatever spot, but if I'm telling people where to go, that's more what I was asking. So for me, I know I've gone to the Mint Museum a couple times, and you know, I, I went with a shorty, but there were shorties in there, and I'm like, you know, want to tell my brothers, like, you might want to go to the museum, like, you know, you got to think outside the box because there's women that 
you know, they might be in a club, but outside the club, they have other interests. Like That's nobody's true. just one dimensional. We all have many different sides to us. So it could be the jazz lounge, like we all about that jazz. It could be a museum. Mm-hmm. You know, there's many different things that happen in Charlotte. Like most recently, the Shout Festival. I went oh, out yeah. there. Let me tell you something. It was so many girls out there. I was with a girl, but I'm just saying, for <laughs> somebody who was not out there with a girl, they had a lot of things that were interactive that you could do. They had these musical seesaws. It was just a bunch of different types of things that, that breaks away from the mode of the club or the movies. True. And I'm just thinking about this past weekend. I think Taste of Charlotte just happened. Yeah, last week. If you would have went out there with your homeboys, you would have definitely seen some women out there. But then it, it goes on to... If you have those conversation skills, if you have the right approach. True. So I think there's there's plenty of places to meet quality women, but like we're saying, it can happen anywhere. Anywhere. You, anywhere. you can be at the gym. I mean, yeah, exactly. It, right. <laughs> especially if you got a woman that's in the gym right. that's working on herself, like you're working on you, then boom. Like, right. well, let me give a secret out to the to the men out there. So the industry I work in is education. They so there's there. plenty women that work in these schools. <laughs> And I, some, I'm going to tell you honestly, I know some women that they go to work, they go home, they eat dinner, watch TV, and go right back to work. So there's some women out there that are, you know, looking for companionship. It's just you got to catch them. When you catch them, you got to have that right mm-hmm. approach. It all comes back to the, the conversation that let it off, the state of dating. You got to have that right approach. Very true. Very true. We didn't touch some heavy subjects. We didn't touch some fun subjects, but... This is more on the heavier side, and I think this was a, a topic that a lot of people probably have some questions about anyway. So the question is, how long should it take for a mm. man to commit to a relationship? Uh oh. Okay. Or a lot of a lot of women got closer to the mic, got closer to their phones, got closer to their computers. They want to know this shit. Okay. And then on top of that, how long is too long? Because some women are ready to leave right now. They were ready to leave yesterday. But they was waiting for this podcast to come out. All right, got two toes out the door already. <laughs> Ten toes down, no sir. It's been taking forever. <laughs> well, Shit. I think the person with the most knowledge on the subject it should speak Kate. first. No, oh, no. Okay. let's go. Let's go cold. <laughs> get, get a perspective Ooh. first. Go All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. When is when? When is when? Well, I would say that each relationship is different. Of so, course. Um, how long is too long? You know, when you get of a certain age, I'll say over 35, women tend to look at things a little differently. You know, we're not looking to play games for the most part. You know what I mean? Um, especially if you, if you don't have any children, you got to keep that in mind as well. So we're looking to progress in life and it's not that we are looking to jump into a relationship or jump into um, jump into marriage right away or rush a relationship is what I, I guess I, what I really want to say but um, I think too long is too long is anytime that red flag is raised and you know that that's not necessarily what you want and you compromise for it you stay in too long period mm-hmm. whether that is Six months, whether that's a year, whether that's two years, whether that's five years, you know, um, that's just my personal opinion about it. But again, like I said, it, it, it really depends on the situation, it depends on the people in the relationship. Um, if you have a plan for your relationship, like we are in this together, we are going to get married, you know, maybe it's a financial issue or something like that where, you know, they feel like, well, let's take care of XYZ first before we plan a wedding, you know, that's, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I personally think that with dating, if you're exclusive, if you're exclusively dating and you want to be married, then I think that the, the stage and the boundaries need to be set from the beginning. Um, not to scare the person away, but you just need to let the person know what you want so that there's no miscommunication down the line. You know, and so that you're just on the on the same page. Like you said, it's touchy because at the same time, you can 
be involved with somebody for six months and they not show their mm-hmm. real self. You don't know their whole character. That's so true. My, my, I've often said, if two people are not on the same page, it's always going to be some kind of conflict. There's always going to be some kind of issue because if I'm not thinking of being exclusive, if I'm not, if I'm not thinking about being serious and you are, there's always going to be a disconnect. So it has to be two individuals on the same page going for that same goal which that's the hardest part I feel like of interpersonal relationships because if somebody's not being 100% honest with you then you'll never know what Mm -hmm. they're really about like they may be in your face saying oh yeah Laco, I love you this and that but then when you're not around they're out there hollering at the next girl that's that's tough and that's the reality like when we talked about to start off this podcast the yeah. state of dating in 2019 there's a lot of people out here you know having their cake and eating it too like I might be talking to you but my hand is in this cookie jar and this right. cookie jar which you know for the whole structure of a relationship dating the whole institution of marriage like one man one woman or 2019 one woman and another woman or one man and another man that's that's your choice if that's how you get down we're not saying that's you do what you do but for me, it's going to be one man, me, one woman, the woman that I choose. We are all sitting here today saying, hey, it got to be a conscious that has to be half saying, hey, you know what? You know what? We've been doing each other for a little bit. Let's be exclusive. Yeah, but if you were somebody you know and you somebody you trust and you've been building for this long, it's like you have to communicate certain ideas. If you have a foundation or something you're sticking to, if you have a plan, then you have to put these things out if you're trying to stick to what the plan is. I think that's where a lot of the issues happen as far as relationships, as far as there no being there's there not being clarity in a relationship, Mm -hmm. the communication piece. Because I know people will be kicking it for months and or years and they don't have any serious conversations. They'll be they'll communicate, oh, you know what you wanna go to this place or you wanna come over or what do you think about this restaurant? And it's like real basic talks not the talks that need to be had that's going to build right. something real and strong that has longevity. So I think to your point, YBB, that that conversation has to be had. Like if you're kicking it with somebody, mm-hmm. we got to have that conversation to say, Hey, I like you. And it seems like you like me. Like, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we exclusive? Are you talking to any other people? Are you sleeping with any other people? That conversation definitely has to be had because Once again, if two people are not on the same page, there's always going to be some issue that that arises sooner or later. Because once that conversation gets brought up and y'all not on the same page, when you find out, you're more than likely not going to be happy about the answer that you get. So at what point do you feel that that conversation should be had? Mm. I think the, the best way to answer that question for me is it definitely depends on the two people. Like, let's say I'm talking to this girl and within two months, she feels like maybe I might be the person she really wants to be involved in. If she doesn't bring it up and I don't feel like that, then there's going to be a lot of time that goes on without us having that conversation. Right. But she's feeling that way about me and me not knowing. And I might be just out here, you know, not saying I'm doing dealing with a lot of chicks, but I'm just carrying on however. So I think this is a word of advice to anybody listening. If you want something more with the person that you're dealing with, you got to go ahead and put yourself on front street. You got to go ahead and say, yeah. hey, we need to have that talk. Like, like man, a lot of times the men. Early though, bro. I mean, but that's the thing. If you feel that way, you have to let it be known. My, hold on, wait, let me if, know. If, if you're saying it's too early and you tell the person and they don't feel the same way, like LaCole was saying earlier, for a woman or for a man, it doesn't matter who, who makes that first initial conversation. You got to say, hey, this person doesn't feel the same way I do. I might want to take a step back. Right. People get fucked up when they told you they didn't want nothing serious, but yet you continue to go on with the situation. And then it's a year later and you wonder why this person don't feel the same way. No, but they told you if you're scared to have that conversation about where you are with somebody as far as a relationship, yeah. then you really can't be shocked if the final answer you get is not to your liking. Because if you were too scared to have that conversation to bring it up, you kind of already it, knew. And it's safe to assume that if you didn't tell somebody that they're already assuming you're fine with what's going on. It, that's that's a key exactly. point too. Really, really tricky, man. Oh, go ahead, speak on it, Nicole. <laughs> go ahead, speak on it, then. <laughs> because, all right, so say you get into a, so you meet someone, like the vibe, feeling the person. Okay, so do you guys? I guess my question is, do you guys feel like in 2019? 
Year of our Lord. Year of our Lord. Bring them back. Hallelujah. So, in 2019, do you feel like it's even possible to begin a relationship or friendship connection and get to know a person without sex on the table and make that decision that I'm really feeling this person before even having sex with them, before making it complicated? Do you feel that it's possible to get to know a person on that level and then make the determination based on your interactions with them and conversations and, you know, just enjoying their company and whatnot that you would want to be with that person before testing it out? I think so. I think so as well. But then just the way society is, Uh-oh. sex is so easily accessible. Like <laughs> you, I mean, it's, I it's, was going there. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's just the <laughs> truth. Like let, if we want to talk about it, let's be honest. Like, yeah. It doesn't take much for two people to end up being in the bed together. And that's part of the, the issue. issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if I mean and I'm not here I'm not here just for anybody because I know I ain't shit. I'm saying <laughs> like, But if if I'm talking to a girl and within two weeks she's already came over and we've already had sex, then of course is there a good possibility good possibility yeah, that that leads to long term success? Probably, Probably not. not. I mean, not to say it can't happen, but statistics have shown if you have sex with somebody that quick, more than likely it's not going to end in something long term and deep because you don't even know that person mm. to, to know. Two weeks ain't yeah, no time. Like, nah. And people are always jumping into stuff anyway. Like it takes it takes a lot of strength to say, you know what? Let's put ourselves on our own little probational period. Like let's really get to know each other. But then. Some, I mean, a guy or a girl, like, let's say it's a girl that likes to have sex or a guy likes to have, have sex. Well, damn, we ain't having sex for six months, then I'm going to go find it where I can. So that's to show the other person, maybe this is not the person for you. For you, exactly, right. exactly. Not going back to what uh, you had said off air, YBB, yeah. you feel, you say you feel like a relationship will only work if the guy is more interested in the girl. Exactly. So elaborate on that. Let the people know. Okay, so I feel like this. And, and let's go back to the whole like who approaches who first. When uh, Cole's talking about whether a, a guy or a girl approaches a guy first, or whether a guy approaches a girl first. So if the girl is more actively involved in the relationship, or more actively involved in the communication, or she's trying to move things along quicker. Then yeah, I, I feel like guys guys in that in that environment are more prone to fall back. It gotta be a guy's job to go ahead and move the wheels forward in a relationship. He gotta be more interested in the girl than the like the girl can have interest in you, yes. But I feel like it's the guy to have he had to have more interest in the girl for it to ultimately work. Cause I I had situations where a girl liked me more than I liked the girl. Now not that the girl wasn't attractive or she wasn't cool. She was cool, she was attractive, but the level of the level of attraction wasn't the same. So it was like, you know, I was feeling her the way she was feeling me. And so she was trying to move the gears a whole lot faster. And it turned me off. So I feel like in order and even the girl told me the same way the same thing as well. She's like, yo, when a guy likes a girl more, it works out for the best because naturally we're hunters. We're the one who wanna pursue things. We wanna, we wanna go after things. So when you give us that space for, for us to go after you, it works out best. You may all too like the guy a lot more than he likes you, but if you play the game to where you allow the guy to pursue you more, it'll work out in your favor. But if you don't be like, hey, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do that. You text him first, good morning. You text him this, and you, you, you doing all the, the work the guy should do, it's not going to work out in your favor. It gets as annoying. It, it does not. That's a fact. <laughs> it gets annoying. I've gotten like multiple good morning texts. I'm like, yo. I didn't even call you, <laughs> I thought I was supposed to do this. I'm like, all right, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> now, you made me think of something, though, as far as what I hear a lot from homegirls versus what I hear from like my homeboys. The homeboys will always be reaching out, like chasing. But then if the girl's not interested, they're going to play that nigga out. Like they're going to talk cash about that dude. Like homegirls will tell me about how many times this guy has reached out without me responding. So it's like a fine line. It's so See, all them it's texts. Because, you know, when yeah. a woman likes you, she likes you. Yes. And when she don't like yeah, you. Yeah, when you're doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. 
Now you a creep. <laughs> now you a, like you these other things. You just gotta just follow the vibe. You can't do too much, and you kind of the just, vibe. No, but for for the men, like I don't know, I, and I've seen it happen like in real life, in real time, in front of me. How you can tell a girl's not interested, but the guy is still trying. Yeah. He's keep keeping on, like keep poking the bear. And when the bear fucking swipe their ass, like <laughs> they wonder like, what the fuck happened. Like, oh you and mean? Get out my phone. Oh, wait, oh you a bitch because you done curked on me? Nah, like I wasn't interested in your dumb ass. Like you couldn't see the sign. So how do you how do you navigate that? And I'm speaking for the men that's gonna be listening. You gotta be able to be able to read in between the lines, yo. Know? They it, 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 it not like mm-hmm. giving you the same energy you putting out. Then chill out. Chill out. Yeah, and if you get missing and she really checking for you, she gonna she hit gonna you up. Yeah, she, yeah, gonna, she gonna, she gonna, gonna be like, yo, yo, where you been at? Like, what's up? Like, exactly. If right. she's not checking for you, then you know, hey, she wasn't the one for you. She wasn't really feeling you like you felt she was feeling you. Gentlemen, if you leave a chick alone and you get that hey big head text, you know, uh, message, message, you went there, <laughs> you went there. <laughs> or how was your day? Or I haven't heard from you in a while. That bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Good people, thank you for tuning in to the Jack of All Space podcast. You are now listening to the voices and tones of Lacole Whitfield, Pride of Africa, Ken Wabibi, mm-hmm. Banks on the Beat, and I'm the boy DJ Spellman. Please subscribe, share, and like. We're going to be on all social media platforms, and please tune in for episode two.